Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today I got a little interesting project I think you guys will enjoy seeing, and uh, we're going to be working on a throttle valve out of a steam locomotive. Now, this is one that was actually sent in to me by a viewer who is wanting me to help him on this. Uh, the viewer's name is Doug Drake. He lives up in the northeastern part of the U.S., and uh, he has a little steam locomotive that he's restoring, and he told me that this is a uh, unit that he bought it's actually a two-foot narrow gauge steam locomotive, an old one, um, that came out from up in Maine. And if you know anything about narrow gauge locomotives, up in Maine, there was a bunch of two-foot gauge stuff going on up there, a real small gauge. Uh, by ref, you know, just as comparison, we have narrow gauge at our museum here in Tifton. Our little Vulcan locomotive runs on a three-foot narrow gauge, and of course, standard gauge is what four foot nine and three-quarter inches. That's probably not exactly right but much wider track. So the narrow gauges use this narrow track. And, but there was quite a few of those uh, two foot gauge steam locomotives up in that uh, northeastern part of the United States back in the day. Now he bought the running gear off of this, he said about 10 years ago, from an estate sale up in Maine. Uh, it didn't have a boiler on it, but he was able to find a uh, boiler made by Porter. Porter is a, another big locomotive manufacturer from back in the day, made uh, industrial locomotives mostly. Um, and it was probably for a, a small narrow gauge locomotive very similar to this and he bought that boiler and was able to adapt it to the running gear that he has. Uh, he says the boiler was in very good condition. He's had it hydro tested, has had it ultrasounded, looks real good on the inside. It's been all inspected and everything but he's been having a problem with this throttle valve that was in that porter boiler in that uh, the valve seats in here are just they become worn, pitted, and it's just not seating real good. So he's wanting me to help him to basically uh, clean these seats up on this and relap this in to get it where it will seal up. Now, I've worked on a couple of throttle valves before off of steam locomotives, our Vulcan locomotive out at the museum. I did it. May have done a video on that at some point in the past. I can't remember if I did or not. It's been a long time ago since we had that throttle valve out. It looks very similar to this one, uh, a little bit larger than this one, but very similar. Um, but what we're going to need to do is, I'll zoom you in here in a minute and show you this, but this has got to have some work done to it. And we're going to have to set it up on the lathe to do that. And uh, hopefully, it's a challenging part to do, and I'll explain why here in just a minute. Before we do that, though, he did send me a couple of pictures of his uh, locomotive that he's working on. I thought I'd share those with you guys real quick so you can kind of see where this thing's going. All right, so this is just some photos he sent, and uh, you can kind of see the running gear up underneath the bottom there. This is the, the boiler, uh, the locomotive boiler. The throttle valve uh, would be located up inside of the steam dome. So in a boiler, the steam dome is the highest point in the boiler where there's steam, and this is where the steam is basically taken out to go and do things. You want to have your steam taken out at a higher point because the higher you get up from the water, the drier the steam gets. When it gets down close to the water, it's very saturated steam. As it gets higher in that steam dome, um, it's, uh, it's, it's just going to be drier steam. So this is the throttle right here, and it goes through through the boiler. There's a rod that goes through there that goes to a connector in the bottom that basically pivots uh, the motion coming in and out to up and down, and that's what opens um, this uh, throttle valve. This throttle valve will basically push up inside the, 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 the throttle valve, the valve wood, and it would allow the steam to enter into that valve and then basically it goes back down into the boiler through a pipe, a steam pipe that goes through the boiler up to, throughout the front of the smoke box and then that would then split and the steam would go to the steam engines on either side which would drive the drivers. So anyway, that's just a little bit about what's, where it's at and what it does and these are just some photos of his uh, restoration. Uh, this looks like it's coming along very nicely. I'll just show these real quickly. Here's another view of the, of the boiler from the front end. Uh, you can see the steam engines down here in the bottom. Basically, he doesn't have a, I don't think it's opened up here in the smoke box, but inside the smoke box that pipe would come out and there's the, the two dry pipes that go down basically into this casting and then the uh, 
steam goes into the steam chest, which the steam chest is right here on the top. That's where the valve is. It slides back and forth that lets the steam go into the engines that drives the locomotive. So just a few more pictures here we'll show you real quick of uh, the work in progress. All right. So here's the whole throttle valve assembly, and uh, you see you got some bolts here. This this is actually the the pipe that goes where the steam goes to the uh, front. So it would probably be in the steam dome with this being the front of the locomotive, this being the engineer side. And uh, like I said, that pipe just goes down, connects to a flange that feeds up to those engines. This is the actual throttle valve. There's a, a stem that comes up through this. And uh, when you crack the valve in the, in the locomotive, it basically pushes this valve up. And um, depending on how far you open it up is how high this raises. And that al basically allows you to control the amount of steam that goes up to those uh, engines up in the front. Uh, it's an adjustable valve. Now, the interesting thing about this is, is there's actually two valve seats in here. There's one in the bottom and one in the top. And if you look inside of this, you can kind of see you got a valve seat here and a valve seat in the bottom. So when you do open that, again, you've got steam coming in two different places. That just allows that steam to come in really well. And uh, that's the way pretty much all throttle valves that I've dealt with, locomotive throttle valves, work. So here's the challenge. We've got the two seats in here. Now the seats inside the, the, the throttle valve itself don't appear to be in too bad a shape. Uh, I mean they seem like I don't feel any big gouges or big ridges or anything like that in there. I, I think these are pretty much going to be okay. And that's good because it's really difficult to machine these. The, the problem we've got is with the actual valve. And I don't know how well you can see this. In fact, let me zoom you in a little bit closer on that valve. So there's a really, a really big ridge up here at the top of this. And, and what happens is, is this, this seat will wear, but it's only going to wear in the area that comes in contact. So this, if, we've, if you were to lay a straight edge across this, it's higher in the top and the bottom than it is in the middle. And it's basically just worn to the point to where it's not sealing up anymore. And that's happening on the top and the bottom. So what needs to happen is, is we need to come in here and basically freshen up these, uh, these surfaces on the lathe and get them where we got a nice flat surface from the top to the bottom. That's going to allow cause this valve to seat down just a little bit deeper than what it is right now, but we've got some extra material. I don't think it's going to be an issue at all uh, to do that. But that should go a long way toward helping us seal this up. Once we get these uh, surfaces freshened up, we'll have to relap it into uh, the, the seats in here so that everything works for good. Now, Here's the challenge. On most valves, you just have a single valve seat. You just go in there and you freshen it up, everything's good. But with this one, you've got two valve seats that are at a certain distance apart, and we've got the matching valve seats inside the, the casting back here. The problem is, is that when I freshen these up on the lathe, um, these seats have to be exactly the right distance apart to mate with the the piece over here in the casting, and it's really not adjustable. It's, it's a certain size, and it's, it's extremely, di really the only way to measure it is through trial and error, and uh, getting it where both seats fit just perfectly. So I've done these before, and uh, it's just, like I said, it's just a certain amount of trial and error involved. Now, I'm sure that when this was made new in the factory, they probably had some jigs and fixtures and so forth to, to help with that, but doing a, fixing an, uh, an old one like this, the only way we can do this is, again, through trial and error. So my game plan is, is we're going to make a fixture to hold this over on the lathe. We'll come in here, we'll freshen this up, and then we'll probably use some uh, lapping compound, and we'll also use some uh, uh, something to mark in here to see where it's cutting and make sure that we're actually lapping both surfaces at the same time. And we may have to make some adjustments uh, on either the top or the bottom valve to get it where it matches uh, what's going on inside the actual uh, throttle body there. So anyway, there you go. Uh, fun little project. Let's get over to the lathe. Let's start working on our fixture to hold this and uh, see if we can get this knocked out. 
So I've just got a piece of uh, metal here. We're going to make this uh, little fixture to hold it on. And I'm going to start by facing that side, and then we'll put a center in it so that we can support it. A little bit deeper. Still just a little bit more. Here we go. This ought to do it. Okay. Just put a center in the end. And that should support it. All right, so we've got a piece of uh, stock that's about one inch in diameter. Um, and we've got a hole through our valve here that's about 625 thousandths, five eighths, just a little over that. We'll uh, kind of make it where it fits up, slides up on there. And what I want to do is I'll have a shoulder back here that this will go up against, and then we'll turn a place for a nut to go up on this end that will tighten this in place and hold it in place, and we can turn that on that mandrel. So uh, let's see, we want to, yeah, we want to take it back to about right in here. Really kind of arbitrary as to where it needs to go to, but that'll be a good point. I'll just make a little point there. And we'll just start turning. Whittling this thing down to be a little over five eighths. We just kind of have to find a fit that it fits on. Um, that hole that's through that casting probably isn't perfectly round and perfectly true. I just want to get it where we got a good, good snug fit up on there, and we'll work off of that. But uh, we're this is about 750 thousandths. We're going to about 625, 630. So um, a few more passes, and we should be there. All right, we've been turning over here and just having to take a little bit of the time, but I've got a nice fit up on there. I mean, it just fits almost perfectly, and that's exactly what I want. That'll give me a mandrel to turn this on. So now what I want to do is uh, I'm going to turn this down to half inch, and we're going to thread that to be able to turn a nut up on the end and we'll just basically tighten it, tighten it up in there and the friction will hold it on this mandrel to turn. So uh, let me get a marker and we'll mark that and turn that in down to half inch and thread it. There we go. Take that off. I want to turn that just a little past that point. to half inch. We'll just turn a little bit off until we get there. Turn this shoulder back here in the back, make sure it's uh, nice and square all the way down. And I'm going to cut into it just a little bit. That just makes sure there's not a radius in that corner where my part won't go up tight against that shoulder. I also want to, just going to come in here and touch off, come out there just a little bit. It just looked like there was a little burr on it. All right, I'm gonna set up for threading and we'll thread that for half inch uh, 13. All right, we got our blade slowed down here. I'm just gonna put a leading chamfer on the front here at the same angle as our threads. Just makes for a nicer lead in there. And zero my dial out here. 
barely cut. And I'm gonna do a scratch pass here first. I'm gonna speed my lathe up a little bit. Just run a little bit too slow. All right, let the number come around. And and let's check that. Make sure we're on 13 threads per inch, which we are, and we should be ready to roll. Put a little oil on there. done a lot of videos on threading so I'm not going into the details here on how to single point thread on a lathe. If you're interested in that I encourage you to go look at some of my older videos. You can search them and there's multiple videos where I go over how to do this uh, and I will say like I often say when I'm doing single point threading I know this looks hard uh, it's really not you just have to practice and if you are scared to do it, I would just encourage you to get out there, get on your lathe, put a couple of pieces of scrap metal in there and start threading. And after you do a few of them and are successful, it really becomes easy. We're just taking a little bit at a time, cutting those threads on out. And what I'm looking for is kind of to where I get a sharp point at the top of the thread and then that tells me it's time to start measuring with a nut for a fit and another pass or two and we should be about where we need to be. But right, we're gonna check it after this pass right here. So uh, we'll pull that out and I've just got a uh, nut here and it's a little bit tight. So uh, I'm gonna take a little bit more. You know, another alternative if you want to when you get down close like that, you can just run a die up on there. Uh, find it a lot easier to just uh, thread it out first and then finish it with a die if you're gonna do that. But uh, I'll just single point it on the rest of the way out. It'll be faster to do this and to go set a die up. Take a little light pass there. And I think I'm gonna do just a few more thousandths and uh, test fit it again. Let's try that again. Yeah, that's starting up on there. I think that's gonna be fine. It's a little bit tight but um, I can tighten it up with no problem. We're good. All right, uh, I'm gonna chant for a couple of corners there. We're just coming here with a little 45 tool. I just wanna break that corner, make a nice, uh, make sure we don't have no something sharp there. Same thing here. All right, and I think our mandrel is done. All right, so we are ready to assemble this. We'll put our valve up on the mandrel. I'm just gonna put a washer on here to kind of where it'll press on the bottom. That washer's a little bit big, but we'll just cut it out with the lathe and uh, make it where it's the right size. Tighten that up. And now the friction we're just sandwiching this together. We'll turn it, it'll turn on that center stem and hopefully with any luck, it's gonna be running fairly true um, to those valve seats. We're about to find out. So let's uh, get our tailstock and support in here. So it looks like it's pretty good. Uh, got a little bit of run out, but some of that's just the wear in it. No big deal. Like I said, our washer's running out, but we're gonna 
cut that down to size. In fact, let's just go ahead and get that out of the way. That's better, just uh, cutting it down to size. So these angles are at 45 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and set my compound on the lathe to 45 degrees to get a tool in here. And we'll see if we can start cleaning those up. All right, guys, I think we're ready to start working on these, uh, resurfacing these two valve faces. And uh, before I do, I, I can't remember, I think I might have said what this angle was before. If I did, I probably said it was 45 degrees. That's wrong, it's, it's a 30 degree angle. I think a 60 degree included angle. Um, but anyway, I, 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 I had 45 in my brain for some reason, but once I got over here and started setting it up, I realized that I had measured and this. It's a 30 degree angle or a 60 degree included angle. So uh, regardless, I think we're ready to go. What I've got is I have my compound set here uh, to where we're gonna be doing a 30 degree angle. And I think what I'm gonna do is actually start on um, this top one. And you can see that that follows that angle pretty well in there. And I'm starting up here because this one appears to be the most worn. And what I wanna do is I'm going to touch off on this um, top edge here. And uh, I'm gonna zero out my, my everything and measure how far in I have to go to get it to clean up. And then we'll come down to the bottom and kind of touch off on this outer ring. The reason I'm doing that is that's, that appears to be an original unworn surface. So uh, with any luck, if I go in the same amount on both of those, um, everything will match up once we, we get everything cleaned up. At least that's the game plan. So um, I probably what I'll do is actually get this one cleaned up first. We won't go all the way in on this one. Uh, we'll, we'll keep track of where we're at, but leave it a little bit high so that we can kind of close that gap up uh, with some trial and error. So anyway, let's uh, come in here. I'm going to, that's the zero. I'm going to zero my digital readout, like I said, and we'll just uh, come across that face. And you see it's only hitting at the top right now. So I'm going to we'll go in about, I don't know, probably 10 thou. Come back across. Again, we're missing through most of that. Let's do another 10. Another 10. All right, we're starting to touch a little bit in there. We've gone in a total of 30 thousandths now. And we'll do another 10. Still skipping a little bit in there, but making some contact. Now we're not touching at all and start picking up again on the bottom. This will take us to 50 thousandths total depth in. Let's see if this gets it. Starting to skip. Valves had a lot of wear in them. All right, let's, uh, I'm just gonna do about five thou this time. I don't wanna take any more off than I have to. Still skipping here, but we're getting a lot closer to where we need to be. going to 
go to 60 thousandths total depth, total in. And we're close, but not quite. Ever so slightly, still got a little bit of a gap in there. All right. This is a lot more than I was thinking I was gonna have to take off. We're at 85 thousandths. I think this will get it. I hope this gets it. I think it got it. Yeah, it got it. All right, that's 85 thousandths off the total, off the top diameter. Uh, We'll come down here. Again, come in and touch off on this one. I'm gonna zero my digital readout again. We cleaned up there at about 30 thousandths. We'll take a little bit more off of it. All right, guys, I think we've got this pretty close. So I'm, what I've been doing is I've been putting this valve in and even though I um, was real careful not to take as much off the bottom as I did the top, when I put this thing in the first time, it was, it was touching in the top, but not the bottom, which means that I had to take some more off the top to get it back down. I really took a little bit more off the bottom than I should have, but no big deal. We're gonna make this thing fit. What I've been doing is bringing this in. It's been catching in the top and I've been able to take my finger and just kind of shake this thing in this valve in the bottom a little bit at a time until uh, when I first did it, there was a good bit of slop in there. And it's, I've gone back to the lathe, I think three times now, taking about, take about five to 10 thousandths off per pass on the top. Now I don't have any movement in there. So I think we're really close, probably where we can start lapping this thing in. Uh, and Till we get it where we got it seated well in both the top and the bottom. That's the game plan. So uh, I think we're ready. I think we're ready. Uh, we'll get our lapping compound out and start lapping. All right, we're ready to start lapping. And to do this, I'm going to be using some lapping compound that's made by uh, Time Saver, is uh, the company that does this. Uh, I think I bought this kit off of McMaster Car. And this is just one that's got a little small sampling of a bunch of different grits. And if you look on the cover here, you got the, the green ones here are for hard metals. This is going to be your cast irons and steels. The yellow ones are for soft metals. It's going to be for aluminum, brass, bronze, etc. And we got everywhere from coarse to very fine. I'm going to use the, the green stuff and we're going to start with the uh, coarse. Uh, because we want to cut some metal here. And all this is, is it's a powder. And you can see in here, it's just, it's exactly that, it's a powder. And um, what I'm gonna do is we'll take some of this and put it in a cup. Let me get something to kind of stir it up with. Just use this brush. And uh, we'll just take some and put it down into this cup. That should be plenty to start with. And what you do is you mix this with some oil. I've just got some, uh, some spindle oil here and we'll take that. And you just wanna create a slurry 
between these two products. Need a little bit more oil. And you can kind of mix up however much you think you're going to need for whatever job you're doing. So let's uh, just do this. We will, I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to just kind of brush some of this compound down in that bottom seat. And we'll do the same thing for the top seat here. And then we will drop our valve down in here. Now, the gentleman that I got this from, he made a little adapter here. He tried lapping this himself, uh, but it was just so far that he couldn't get it done without machining. But he sent along this little jig that we're gonna put in a drill. And we just uh, let it roll. And I'm going to pull it out, and you can see what's going on. Um, and it looks like it is touching in the top and the bottom. It looks like it's cutting in the top and the bottom. Not fully in the bottom. It's only touching, I'm looking down in here, it's, it's only touching in part of it in the bottom. So the top looks like it's pretty well touching all the way around. So it's going to take a little bit of work uh, to, to do this. We're just going to apply a little bit more lapping compound down in there. You want to just uh, add some fresh from time to time, and it's going to be back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until you get it where it has cut what you want to cut. So I've kind of changed up here and gone from using that little uh, hand drill to over here at the lathe to do my lapping. I didn't really like the way that that... Uh, little adapter he made wasn't running true I was getting a little bit of an oscillation in there and I was just afraid that might affect the lap so I just mounted this back over here on this lathe spindle I had to cut that washer down a little bit to make it, let it fit through the bottom but uh, just turning my stem and I can come in here and just kind of push it up on there and this also allows me to kind of go in some steps here because what will happen is is that will drag a little bit more of the uh, lapping compound whenever I loosen up it kind of laps it just brings that lapping compound in there and I can get a little bit more cycles out of this and I'll pull it off and we'll put a little bit more lapping compound down in here and I'm just uh, making sure those uh, Valve faces are covered really good. And go through another cycle. Rinse and repeat. Um, there's no way to get in a hurry about this lap, and it just takes time. It cuts a little bit at a time until you get a nice uh, valve seat. All right, I think we're going to call this uh, job done. I've been lapping on this for probably about an hour now, and I feel like I've got pretty good seats on the top and bottom. Uh, it's definitely rubbing in both places simultaneously. Um, it may not be 100% across that seat, but it's good enough that I'm going to go ahead and send it back up there to him. And uh, at the state that it is in now, I think that if he wants to lap it further, he can easily uh, spend the time and do that. I'm just sitting here spending a lot of time doing this when this is something that he could be doing up there. And I know that he's tried lapping this to begin with without having to machine it. But now that we've got things where they are, it's really can be further lapped if he so thinks he needs to, to do that. It's probably good enough as it is. But uh, I'm real happy with how this turned out. Uh, everything uh, appears to be seating really good. You know, I was a little bit concerned that we may drop the top of this down 
past the top of below it. You know, we had to take a good bit of metal off to get it to clean up. And uh, I know that the bottom seat is probably hitting, is the, the top of this is probably a little bit below the top of the seat down there, but we've still got plenty of material that it's uh, seating against. So I, I think we're in good shape here. I think this is gonna be just fine. Um, you know, this is probably was the original seat in this boiler that's well over 100 years old and uh, with fresh seats in here probably no more than that locomotive will be ran it'll last more than a lifetime i'm sure uh, as it is as long as it's cared for so i'm gonna pack it up send it on back up well there we go uh, one more project knocked out i'm gonna send this back up to doug and like i said if he wants to lap on it further he can sure do that uh, but i think it's probably good enough like it is uh, one thing i'll mention on this time saver lapping uh, compound is uh, i was i was told a long time ago by someone I think Richard King told me this, but he said that this stuff was uh, kind of invented back during World War II by the Navy because they were needing to lap a lot of stuff in for uh, repairing ships. And uh, one of the concerns that they had with their lapping material that they were using is that they didn't, didn't get it perfectly clean, that uh, grit from this lapping stuff could get into uh, the, the machines and mechanisms on the ship and cause further damage. So they came up with this product here that will break down uh, pretty rapidly. You have to kind of keep putting fresh stuff on it for it to continue to cut because it breaks down rather quickly so that if in the heat of battle repair, uh, they don't get something perfectly clean, uh, this, this product's not gonna damage things further, uh, or at least the damage will be extremely minimal compared to your more traditional lapping compounds. So it, it breaks down over time uh, fa fairly quickly. So you have to keep a fresh coat on there for it to work, but you know, if there was a little bit of lapping compound left in here, and I took this to my parts washer and cleaned it really well, but if there were, and it got down into the, the, the cylinders on the engine of the steam locomotive, it probably wouldn't cause any damage at all. Uh, or very little damage and not enough damage to matter. It's not like it's gonna sit in there and go back and forth and score big holes into the cylinders or what have you. Uh, it, would, it would break down pretty quickly and all would be good. So anyway, I really like this stuff. I use it all the time and uh, it's been a good product for me. Again, like I've saved me all the time, these guys aren't sponsoring me or anything like that. Just a satisfied customer uh, telling you guys what I like that works good in my shop. And with that, guys, that will be a wrap. As always, uh, thank you for so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that thumbs up comment, uh, thumbs up button down there if you liked what you saw. That helps out with my analytics a lot. Uh, leave comments down below if you like as well. That uh, also helps out with my analytics. And uh, hit that bell icon if you want to get notifications of when new videos are posted to the channel. And with that, catch you on the next video. As always, thanks for watching.